Okay, I'm going to inventory all the parts and we'll start with the rod blank. And so this is the Epic 686 in Amber. And there's four pieces. Next, I have two grip options. I made this grip. This is a cork grip. Uh, I made this with the intent to put it on this rod, but then I found one of my older grips that I made and didn't use, and I really like this grip better, so I'm probably going to use this one. This is a urethane core uh, carbon fiber fiberglass skinned uh, grip, and with this one I like a wood insert. I haven't decided whether I'm going to put a fighting butt on this. It is a six weight. That wouldn't be typical. It's not traditional, but hey, this is a custom rod, so I can put anything I want on there. And since I will probably use this in my kayak, I really like having a fighting butt. So I may go ahead and use the smaller fighting butt on this one, which I think looks pretty cool. So that one's already been reamed out, but I do need to do some, put another coat of clear coat on it. Next would be the uh, winding check. And so the winding check is nickel silver. It's a little bright. I can actually tone that down a little bit. Maybe I'll do that on, on this rod. All the guides I'm using are um, a dark nickel. So for the running guides and for the tip top, which I have already put on the tip section. Oh, they're all dark nickel. And so the tip top and the running guides are Snake Brand Universals in dark nickel. I think, I think they call them black nickel. And then for uh, the stripping guide, I'm using a more traditional dark nickel one with a agate um, insert in medium amber. Okay, and for the threads, I'm going to use pale yellow for the main wraps. Maybe tip it with some black. And uh, I might use the goldenrod. I'm not sure. These are all um, silk. So this is what the pale yellow silk thread will look like. It'll be clear. And this one actually has... This is actually a four weight in the exact same color. And so this is with the black tipping. And then the golden rod looks like that. It's a little darker. So we'll see. I don't know. Once I start wrapping the guides, I might do something a little different. I don't know. But I have everything I need here. And so now we're going to spine the blank and I'm working with the tip section first. I'm going to need some painter's tape and a Sharpie. And I'm going to place the painter's tape around uh, the middle of the blank and rest the butt of the blank, the, the wider part of the blank on a hard surface. The tip on my hand gently roll back and forth until it settles into a natural curve and you'll feel it pop into place. And it's right there. So at this point, I will take the Sharpie, make a dot, and I like to make three dots, and then I will uh, connect those dots, and that will be my, uh, that's where I will align the guides. And that's, um, that's how you do it. Okay, and for the middle sections of the rod, uh, they, they get stiffer on this particular blank, so they're going to be harder to spine. This is um, the same process. You just roll it, make your dots, and align your guides along there. When you get down to the butt section, it just doesn't want to bend as much. In fact, 
I don't even worry about it. This isn't the butt section, but this is this is um, not a very bendy section, not very flexible. So I'm not worried about finding the spine on that one either. So really, I'm just focused on this particular rod. I'm focused on spining the top two sections. Okay, I've installed the tip top onto the blank. Uh, I've used five minute epoxy on this. Um, you could for this use something like the flex coat uh, tip top adhesive. You just you know put a put it over a lighter and then just rub it onto the blank and slip the tip top down onto it. Um, I do prefer to use the the five minute epoxy now. I used to use the uh, tip top adhesive but I have had tip tops come off um, so I'm I'm more inclined to just go ahead and put the heavy duty five minute on I'm not planning on taking this tip top off this is required for the next step where I will be hanging some weight off the tip top to evaluate how the rod is deflecting now the next step uh, in the rod building, uh, after I have spined the, the blank, is I, I like to get some data uh, on the blank itself before I start building the rod, and then I'll do it again after. And I'm using just something called the common sense system. It's just a way to measure how a rod deflects under a given load. So uh, the load is going to be determined by a deflection of one-third the length of the rod itself. So I built this little wood jig um, to, to do this and so it's just holding the, the blank on. I'm going to check that it, it's level and it was when I started the process so I'm going to leave it there. It's okay. And then you can see the blank and how it bends. And so a lot of your deflection is happening in this general area. The majority of the deflection in the upper third of the blank. So it's really a medium action rod. So a third of the blank length will be um, 34 inches. So I have it bending 34 inches and the amount I'm using pennies and that's where the common sense, C-E-N-T-S comes in. Okay, now I want to figure out where I want to put that stripping guide. That's the first guide above the, the grip section. Um, the charts uh, will, the guide spacing charts will tell you thir usually 30 inches from the butt, which for me is uh, actually where I like it. Um, so I have that marked here with tape. And I also have uh, where the grip will be marked out with tape. And I'm going to show you how to measure where it should be uh, if you have long arms or short arms. You may not want it at 30 inches. So, so this is a way to determine um, a more custom placement. Okay, so you'll grip the blank. Place your hand right on your hip bone, right at your side reach up and touch the blank and where you can do so comfortably is where you should put your first guide that's where you're going to put that stripping guide and for me it's 30 inches i've put tape down on the bench and started marking where the guides are going to go i've used the uh, guide spacing calculator on rodsense.org and so this tape will just remain on the bench throughout the build for reference
I've got one guide going in right here, and that's right at the end of a ferrule. That's not an issue. Uh, I'll just use part of the guide wrap as the actual ferrule wrap, which I'm going to do anyway, so I actually don't mind this. This is actually a good situation. This one falls right at the edge of the ferrule, and so that's not going to work. So we either have to shift it over down the blank to the right here or onto the ferrule. So I will see how this works out. I'll go ahead and temporarily put, put it on the uh, outside, on the, on the uh, female end of the ferrule. I use elastic cord to temporarily hold my guides onto the rod blank. And I'm going to show you how I do that. And this stuff is called thick elastic cord. I buy this at Michael's. All right, on this particular section, I know I need to put two guides on, so I'll need four pieces of cord about five inches long. And I'm just going to wrap twice around and then a simple overhand knot. And that will be enough to, you don't want to tie a square knot in there just yet because once you tighten these down, you won't be able to get the guide feet under. So then once it's on there, you can go back and, and secure it with an extra overhand knot, making a square knot. And then as you wrap, you'll just cut these off. So this is no different than putting tape on. I just prefer to do this because I can slide these around on the blank to adjust where I want them. And that's how I do it. using the jig again to do a static load test using these guides, these guide measurements. So everything looks pretty good. The line is following the curvature of the blank nicely. Now, This is always an area where you need to pay particular attention and everything looks good down at the tip. So here was that problem area where the guide was right at the edge of the ferrule on the tip section. And so I started with it on the ferrule, which I prefer to do is have it right on the ferrule. And that looks pretty good. So I'm not going to change it. Everything's good. Now, the great thing about this elastic is now I can tie it off. Um, just basically take those overhand knots and make them into square knots and get them nice and snug. And we'll take it out and cast it. Okay, I've just put the guides on with the elastic cord. They're on there pretty good. I've strung it up with some fly line. And so all I'm going to do is just put the reel in my pocket and hold the rod about where the grip will be and give it some casts. 